the city of Greensboro continues to grow. Each year, the city invests significantly in new construction projects and repair or replacement of aging infrastructure. Greensboro Under Construction will focus on projects that are underway across the city and in your neighborhood. Extensive work has been taking place on the east side of Greensboro as part of a major four-part project that provides significant upgrades to sewer lift stations and wastewater flow to the TZ Osborne Wastewater Treatment Facility. We are at the site of the Stewart Mill lift station. Uh, we did a previous uh, update for this project and we are actually at the far end of the Terrapin Ridge subdivision that never got developed. The city used it to uh, put this lift station in. This is actually part of a three-part job, uh, or four-part job, really. We've got the Rock Creek uh, force main that is installed, ready to be used. They've got to do some updates to the Rock Creek lift station. And then this is currently pumping sewer from here all the way through the Stewart Mill force main to the um, wastewater treatment plant, TZO. And we are currently working on the outfall for the Young's Mill uh, lift station. That will allow us to get a Away from using that lift station and have everything served by gravity to this location. This project entails the construction of approximately 23,200 linear feet of gravity sewer outfall to meet future development and capacity needs. The new outfall will connect to the proposed Stewart Mill Road lift station. This is the Young's Mill outfall. This project is a 36 inch and 42 inch uh, sewer line. We are uh, tying in the Young's Mill lift station, serving it all by gravity to the Stewart Mill lift station. Uh, you can see that uh, it's a very large scale project. This is about $17 million and it's approximately going to take 720 days, weather depending. Um, we're doing really well on schedule. We're about 30 feet deep in the ground, so it's an extremely slow process that we're going through and we have a lot of creek crossings, road crossings, um, a significant amount of rock. We've had to blast every inch that we've gone, and so uh, we're really excited about being able to get this done, but we do have probably at least another year before we're complete, if not 18 months. Now you can connect to information and fun in downtown Greensboro with the new Smart City kiosks. Resembling large-scale smartphones, these kiosks feature up-to-date information on nearby restaurants, retail, events, and public transportation. These are one half of a, a system that with Duke Energy and Smart City Media are putting out to broadcast near real-time data on what, what's going on downtown. Um, restaurants, uh, local events. A second half of this is a mobile application that will show a, to a lot of the same things. Total there will be, well, there will be 11. So the, the vast majority are on Elm Street. There will be one at the depot and two around, around Government Plaza. One of the main things that, that we're trying to do with this system is let people know what's going on, down, going on downtown from one, one end to the other. There's a lot of exciting things going on downtown Greensboro yeah. and we want to make it as easy as we, as, it, as we can to make sure all the information is where they need to be. A ribbon cutting was held recently to celebrate the opening of the Greensboro Aquatic Center's new fourth pool. This new pool will provide 19 additional lanes making the center the largest of its kind in the country. This expansion will provide increased pool time for members, clubs, and high school teams, as well as exercise, classes, swim and water safety lessons, and recreational swimming. The new fourth pool is going to add 19 additional short course lanes and also eight additional long course lanes for us. So this is going to give us greater flexibility by freeing up the very, very busy recreational therapy pool. So we'll now be able to expand programming and therapy, rehabilitation and additional fitness classes and expand programming over here and give more lane space to the many, many club teams and high school teams that are with us year round.
Phase two construction of the downtown Greenway has changed the face of Gate City Boulevard. Construction of the downtown Greenway from Gate City Boulevard along Murrow Boulevard and Fisher Avenue to Green Street includes a waterline upgrade along Fisher Avenue. It incorporates bike lanes along Gate City Boulevard and includes mast arms for traffic signals along this corridor. The main work on the intersection of Gate City Boulevard and Murrow Boulevard has been completed with new traffic lights and a change in the traffic pattern. We are at the intersection of Gate City Boulevard and Murrow Boulevard. You can see behind me uh, the intersection changes that are taking place. This is the start of Phase 2 Greenway and we are redoing the intersection here and once this is complete and traffic is switched over they'll move over to beginning work on the greenway itself uh, we will lose one lane of traffic down murrow boulevard that will be the uh, greenway itself you can see here behind me the gorel street bridge there are steps that are currently being installed that will provide access from uh, the upper streets there down to the greenway um, and we expect this project to probably take about a year and a half to two years. Um, this, this section of the Greenway will come from Gate City Boulevard and all, tie all the way back into Elm Street there at Fisher, um, up to Green. And that will pretty much complete the loop of the downtown Greenway area. Construction on Phase 3 of the Downtown Greenway has been completed. The rock wall veneer has been installed and caps will be installed on the top and down the sides of the existing rock wall. The Cedar Street cul-de-sac has been paved and plantings will take place in the fall. Construction has been taking place on the Elm Street Waterline Rehabilitation Project. This waterline replacement will start at A. Brenner Place next to the Tanger Center and run to Smith Street. Uh, this is phase one of the Elm Street Waterline Rehabilitation Project. Uh, we are out in front of the Tanger Center as you can see and so we decided to bid this portion of the project earlier so that everything would be complete and ready to go by the time the Tanger Center uh, was complete and ready to go. So phase one is right now, and that is going to take place from A. Brenner all the way down to um, Smith Street, but we are doing them in sections. So right now uh, we're go going from A. Brenner down to Lindsay Street. That section of it is closed. We expect that portion to take about six weeks. And then once this section is complete and ready to go, we will move and close from Lindsay to Smith Street. Um, this is a 10 inch existing water line that we are upsizing and upgrading to 12 inch due to the uh, age of the existing line, but also with all the expansion here in downtown, this allows us to have uh, an increased flow throughout the system and allow more uh, development to take place. In 2004, the city established former water and sewer rehabilitation programs to address our aging sewer and water distribution systems. The water distribution system consists of about 1,500 miles of water lines within the Greensboro city limits. The wastewater or sewer system, which is a completely different system, consists of about 1,400 miles of sewer lines within Greensboro city limits. The goal is to tackle 1% of each system a year. Many factors are considered in determining locations for sewer rehabilitation. These include inflow and infiltration, which is excess stormwater or groundwater coming into the sewer system, sewer capacities, age and material of the line, maintenance history, and road surfacing priorities. Sewer evaluations often have several steps. 
that include installing flow monitors into manholes to identify areas where there is inflow and infiltration. Conducting smoke tests to identify where inflow and infiltration is coming from. Running closed circuit television cameras through pipes to determine what condition they are in. If work is being done in your neighborhood, you will see door hangers letting you know testing or work will be taking place. Door hangers will be used two weeks before work begins and again 48 hours prior to the start of the work. Water Resources Department staff consider many factors when determining the priority of water line rehabilitation. These include the age and material of the line, fire hydrant flow capacity, existing water quality issues, water main break history, and road resurfacing priorities. Unless it's an emergency, door hangers will be placed at least 24 hours in advance any time service is interrupted for an extended period of time. That notice will also include an estimate of how long the interruption may last. If at any time your water and or sewer service is off for more than 30 minutes and you've not been notified about any disruption by a contractor or city employee, please call the city water dispatcher at 336-373-2033. If you are placed on temporary water, there is no charge for water use until your regular service is returned. Your water service will be disrupted for less than 10 minutes when a temporary line is connected and disconnected. For more information, visit the city's website at greensboro-nc.gov slash rehab. Use the Departments tab to navigate to Water Resources and look for the Water and Sewer Rehabilitation tab on the left. Here you can find more information on the different methods used for rehab in each system and access a map that will show you where work is in progress and where it is proposed for each system. These are just a selection of the many projects taking place across our growing city. Look for the next Greensboro Under Construction to bring updates on current projects and new construction as Greensboro moves forward.